Why I don't think that the ketogenic diet is a good tool for permanent weight loss. This time we do more science and no drama. So buckle up, it's lecture time. So the ketogenic diet does not have one recipe and there are different types that are defined uh, for research. They all range from 90 to 60% of energy deriving from fats and only 2 to 10% deriving from carbohydrates. We call this low carbohydrate diet. So all these diets have the one goal to induce ketogenesis, hence the name ketogenic diet. I explained ketogenesis fundamentally in my last video and I got a really detailed de response uh, in my comments from you beaver, which is really appreciated. Thank you very much. And if you want to know more about ketogenesis, then you have to watch my last video and, wa and read that comment and that will give you a really good overview. The ketogenic diet is in a sense different from a normal diet in the aspects of fat intake and carbohydrate intake. So on a normal healthy diet your energy should come somewhere between 20 and 40 percent from carbohydrates and of course a lot less than 60 percent from fats and the ketogenic diet is different typically you have anywhere between 90 or even more percent of uh, energy deriving from from fats to 60 percent and then less than 10 percent of energy coming from carbohydrates the ketogenic diet were first found to be effective actually in a non-treatable seizure disorder so for example epilepsy so that was back in 1920s and they're still used today in the seizures, seizure disorders that are not treatable by medications, which is about the third of the seizure disorders. So and that has been for a long time the only application for ketogenic diets all the way into the 1960s or 70s, when the ketogenic diet has also has found a new niche, which is the obesity and weight management niche. There is no uh, dispute in the scientific community that a ketogenic diet, if it's a calorie deficit diet, will uh, lead to weight loss. But there are several hypotheses floating around why that is. Uh, and one is, for example, that it suppresses appetite. And that is in somewhat true. A ketogenic diet has the ability to suppress appetite, but so have also other diets. For example, in this study, a low-fat vegan diet, so a low-fat, less than 10% fat, had actually higher appetite suppressing effects than the ketogenic diet that it was compared with. And if we look at the weight loss front itself, the ketogenic diets that were used there did not outperform other diets that are higher in carbohydrates and lower in fat at the same caloric levels. And that's really important to understand. Or in other words, there's a pretty good evidence that if you're on a ketogenic diet, the main reason you're losing weight is because you're in a caloric deficit. It'd be easier to get there because of the appetite suppression. But again, if you're not in a caloric deficit, you're not losing weight. So there are two types of diabetes, as we all know. Let's first look at type 1 diabetes. In some studies, uh, adults with type 1 diabetes have shown favorable outcomes, but in other studies, they have shown non-favorable outcomes. For example, in this study, while a ketogenic diet helped significantly to uh, control your blood glucose level, it also triggered significantly more hypoglycemic episodes in adults compared to uh, uh, compared to normal diets. So like 6.3 episodes per week versus 1 to, point, 1 to 2 episodes per week in this particular study. While this is a, definitely not a conclusive body of knowledge, most scientists agree that a sustained ketosis increases complications for type 1 diabetes patients and not decreases it. Now let's talk about type 2 diabetes and insulin sensitivity. So it's clear that the short-term ketogenesis seems to help with weight loss, as a lot of other diets do, can suppress appetite and, very, and reduces blood sugar level. Many also claims because of that, it improves insulin sensitivity. That is not 100% clear. That seems that the improved insulin sensitivity that is observed in people that are on a ketogenic diet and that are you losing weight depends a lot more on the loss of the fat mass. In general, for people with a type 2 diabetes, a short-term ketogenic diet has the potential to help with insulin sensitivity. Now, what if you're not diabetic and you're a ketogenic diet, which is what a lot of people are? The risks to become diabetic is higher than if you're not on a ketogenic diet, especially if you use a lot of animal proteins and fats. If you emphasize more vegetable fats and vegetable proteins, then that risk is a lot lower to become diabetes diabetic later in your life. Okay, so now let's talk about the elephant in the room, the cardiovascular disease risk. So the effect of low carbohydrate diets on LDLC levels is a major concern in the health community for a really long time. So for example, in this study here, LDLC levels increased by 6% in low carbohydrate diet patients, although they had weight loss, while at the same time they dropped by 11% if individuals were on a normal low calorie diet. Both groups lost weight, and typically if you lose weight, your LDLC levels drop too. But the risk that they rise if you're on a ketogenic diet, again, especially if you eat a lot of animal fats and animal proteins, is higher than if you're on a normal calorie, uh, low calorie diet. So this is the reason why I think that a ketogenic diet long term is not a good idea. But I do want to talk also about something else, and that's the yo-yo effect. The keto diet is a very restrictive diet. I think we all can agree on this. And while short term, 
it helps you to lose weight long term just for the health implications alone I would not want to risk that. The matter of the fact is that a lot of people at some point get off a keto diet because it is too restrictive and then they often bounce back because they're going back on their old eating habits. The question is, is it good to go back on a keto diet several times? So there has not been a lot of research done on this, but there has been some in mice models. And basically what that research shows is that if you cycle through many times through a keto diet, your adipose tissue, so your fat tissue will adapt to this, which means it become harder for you to, to lose weight. That happened at least in mice models. We don't know if that also happens in humans. At least the study suggests that you should be very careful when implementing a ketogenic diet. As I said before, I offer non-BS fact-based information. Even if I go on a rant, what I say is founded in actual science. I know the ketogenic diet promotes weight loss, but I don't think it is a good tool if you want to keep off your weight for the rest of your life. So, careful advertisement. I teach in my book how to replace your diet gradually with healthier, low-calorie, nutrient-dense foods. And uh, my book is soon up for pre-order. And there you have it. I advertise for my own book. Like this video, follow me for more. I see you soon and I'm out.